How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Greels Reels. I'm your host, Robert Greeley, and on deck today we have Ottawa 67 and NHL draft prospect Cam Tolnai. Cam is honestly one of the nicest guys, smartest kids, too, that I've ever met while shooting hockey. So I'm really excited that you guys are going to get to know him over this hour and 30 minute roughly chat. It was also his birthday recently, so hey, go wish him a happy birthday over on Instagram or you know wherever you can find him. Maybe even just put it in the comments or something. But yeah, without further ado, you know, let's just get right into it. This is Reels Reels episode 53 with Cam Tolnai. I'm your host, Robert Greeley. Enjoy. Cam, it's good to see you, bud. Man, it's uh, it's been a minute. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? And I, you know, I can't complain. Keeping busy like you can nowadays what have you uh what have you been up to how are you scratching that quarantine itch basically um so i've been doing a lot of school work recently um taking two courses at queens to fill a lot of the free time and then um the gyms are closed right now so working out at home and fortunate i'm able to facetime my uh trainer so do that in the mornings and then uh if someone has an outdoor rink with all the rinks closed right now I'll get on that too yeah, I remember reading like the 67's article on that. So you've started your courses now at, at Queens? Yeah. How's that been going? It's been going good. So this is just the start of the second semester, you want to, I guess you want to call it. Um, so we're in week two. So last semester I took uh, microeconomics with Will Cranley, who I think you had on here before. And, yeah. and then, and then uh, so I'm taking the other half, so macro, and then uh, the other course is war and revolution history so that was something that interested me and wanted to take it well you know what if you need any notes for macro economics i can definitely toss them over all right perfect i'm sorry that was a bull-faced lie basically when i took that <laughs> course in university i walked in the door i walked out at the halfway mark and i dropped it and i switched into something else that was not for me yeah i i'm uh into numbers and business and that kind of stuff so uh, kind of like the course, but I wasn't a huge fan of micro, but we'll see what happens with macro. Is that where the uh, degree is going to lie, business or economics? Yeah, so some I think after school, after hockey's done, something to do with finance. Um, right now, it's just get as many courses as I can done. And at Queen's, you can't really take any other courses besides economics in your first year because of their commerce program. So we'll see what happens, but business is definitely the area that I want to go into. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited to see what that, you know, unfolds for you. You mentioned hockey when hockey's finished, but right now it is very much, you know, a big part of your life. Let's kind of start from yeah. the beginning. You're, you're from Oakville. I mean, great, great town. I, I love every second that I've spent in Oakville, actually. It's uh, it's one of my favorites to just kind of do that little freeway and uh, you drive past like the Rogers center and the CN tower, then you kind of get into Oakville and nestle down the yep. homes are absolutely beautiful. But yeah. So tell me growing up in Oakville. Um, growing up in Oakville is great. Um, I'm sure you, maybe you don't know this, but I am a triplet. So growing up, uh, there's it's always busy in the house here. Um, playing hockey wise, I played for Oakville from when I started hockey all the way to Ottawa. So really Ottawa is the second team I've ever played for um i've had a lot of close buddies that live near me that still play that still play hockey and one of them luke evangelista he plays for london yeah we're still good buddies and we were on a rink a couple days ago so that was pretty fun and then um yeah school was good uh there's a lot of kids in the in the neighborhood which was nice so got a lot of hang out with them but uh i wouldn't change anything growing up in oakville when you get to play your buddies in OHL matches and, you know, you're gearing up against London, that's got to be a pretty surreal moment, eh? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I have um, five team, yeah, five teammates who are playing in the OHL right now. So two of them are on Kingston, so we play them pretty often. And then one of them, he's on Flint, the other one's London, and the other one's Sudbury. So uh, usually a few times a, a month, they'll play someone that um, grew up playing with so uh, it's pretty cool and you kind of know what each other do so it's it's hard to go in the corners especially against Kingston two of their defensemen I played all the way up growing up with so I kind of know what I do but it's it's always fun 
Yeah, they uh, they basically got the game plan book for you. So they they're telling all their teammates too, and it's just like, hey guys, Cam's coming down the ice. He's going to do this, this, and this. Just shut him down that way, and that that's why the the point totals probably disappear, eh, against those uh, teams. Um, yeah, but surprisingly, against Kingston, the, the team that I would say the point totals go up, um, maybe to do with just how good we were and they were sort of rebuilding. But yeah, Kingston was a, a feel as a team that I've been having success with. Mostly to, because they're not on the ice when I am. They're usually up against uh, the other lines, but you know we'll we'll save that for uh, this year. Hopefully, play this year and next year when I'm going up against them. Yeah, well, we'll say that uh, you know you got the leg up on them in those matchups anyway. Yeah, it, it's always fun to give the you know priority to the 67s, obviously. Yeah, you've been uh, at some like Mem Cup simulation. Uh, PS4 games too, eh, during the quarantine period? Yeah, so um, Haley, the uh, coordinator for Ottawa, she asked me if I wanted to play in it. And I've been playing a bunch of video games. There's not much else to do right now. So um, I got to play uh, representing the team. Um, first game played against Calgary. Um, I won at 9-1, so that was a, a pretty, pretty big win. And then um, the next game unfortunately lost to Erie. The guy was pretty good. I think he uh he made it to the semifinals, I think, but it was it was a really fun experience, something that you usually don't get to do. And um representing the team was also great too, considering I haven't really played for the last ten months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was honestly it was so funny. Like I'm seeing the live tweets of these video games and I think that was the most heavily invested I've ever been in hockey since everything's like shut down. Yeah, besides uh the Stanley Cup playoffs because this regular season hasn't started yet. There wasn't really any hockey going on, so uh, I was tuning into the other games as well just to see see some faces and watch some hockey if it's not real it's video games. That must have been a nice networking uh, opportunity. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, the guy on Erie I'd never met before, but now uh, we're sort of, I won't say buddies, but because he beat me, but um, we, we're acquaintances. So uh, <laughs> if, if, if we ever see each other on the ice game, we'll probably say hi, but, um, and then the guy who I played against Calgary, he was on my under-17 team and uh, for Hockey Canada, so it was good to talk to him. I don't think he really wanted to talk to me after the game, but um, <laughs> before, we, we we talked a bit and catched up. So, so are you, uh, you a big gamer? Like, or uh, is that something that's kind of where most of your free time goes? Um, it's a considerable amount. Right now, um, during the year, not so much, just with, school, with high school and then um, practice and trying to get enough sleep but yeah in my free time I, I like to play video games right now I'm into FIFA so that's the game that I'm playing and then NHL too with uh, a couple of our equipment managers and uh, a radio guy we sort of have an ESHL team that we play called the Moustachers so it's pretty fun. Yeah, you must always have a, an opponent though like I mean you know growing up and having all your old teammates as possibilities but then you know you mentioned being a triplet like you just almost have two opponents on call right there for you. Yes, and also uh, my brother Davis, um, I don't think you've met him. He was drafted to Ottawa, but he's a goalie too. So sort of always had someone to shoot on, even though he doesn't really like to be goalie nowadays. But um, the competition just going against each other, being on the same team all the way up. So it, it's been great. Tell me just in the family aspect of having a triplets in the household, because that just – blows my mind honestly that the fact that like you know because me and my younger sister it's like if you know we're six years apart so if there's for the most part there's really not that many things that conflict because when she was on the ice I'm on the ice like you know six hours later necessarily right so yeah, yeah what what in the world is that like managing that um feel bad for my mom I also have a, another older brother so four boys in the house and then we have a, a dog too so um it's a, it was a crazy, you'd say. There's always something going on. And um, fortunately, Davis and I, we play on the same team. So usually two of us are on a hockey. And then we have a, a bunch of the guys who live near us. So we could carpool with them. But um, at home, yeah, a lot of competition, a lot of sharing, which nowadays isn't, isn't so much. But before, we'd always fight about stuff and who was who. So um, it's fond memories. But it was definitely uh, something that not many people get to live through. Now, where are you in, like, are you, like, the oldest? Like, is there bragging rights there, or are you the youngest, or right in the middle? 
I'm the youngest, so there's okay. no official thing, but we sort of, my mom sort of remembers. So it's uh, Davis and then uh, my other brother, Ryan, and then I'm last, but I'm the tallest, so. <laughs> and the best looking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, do they, uh, I was going to say, do they harp on you a little bit more for being the youngest? Um, no, they, I'm, I'm bigger and stronger than them. So, um, okay. if they want, if they want to, they, they can, but they usually don't. It's funny. Cause a lot of, a lot of younger siblings, man, they had to wait a long time before they surpass the older siblings. But I mean, obviously you guys are talking about a matter of minutes, so not, yeah. uh, not too bad there. Is that kind of what drove you into hockey? Like all the um, family aspect? Um, sort of my dad growing up, he, he's from Ottawa and he, he grew up in the same neighborhood that I billet right now. So it, in the high school that he went to the minute from my billet house, which is kind of ironic, but, um, yeah, just, I always liked hockey growing up. My dad played it. My dad was a skier as well. So my dad built a rink in my backyard when I think we were two or three and then we got out there and I loved it. And then, um, yeah, I tried out for Oakville, um, then made it and then the rest is history and then Davis was the goalie for that team so um, this was Ottawa's the first team that I haven't had Davis as a teammate which kind of like because uh, he would always get on me if I didn't score or made a bad play af- after the game but nowadays it's it's great <laughs> yeah it uh, the rivalry it never stops when it comes with uh, family no not at all especially with uh, even with video games right now we always want to beat each other and someone's cheating or uh so it's awesome. with, with the rangers obviously yep. you mentioned you have five teammates now from that minor hockey days of they're they're in the ohl alongside with you just kind of take me through the seasons there are, like are you playing these games kind of thinking like hey i gotta put on a show because i really want to get scouted here for the ohl or are you just in the moment enjoying it um I would say more than in the moment enjoying it. Um, fortunately, my team, um, we, we were really good all the way up. So in minor midget, um, in the league, we didn't lose a game. So um, for we were 32-0-4. So it was me and Evangelista were line mates. So it was sort of like a little dynamic duo. And um, it, it was really fun. And then our defense was really strong which helped out us so we can sort of cheat a bit on offense and go up to score but um yeah it's it was uh it was nervous but when you look back at it um it, it was really fun and you kind of wish you were go back to those days because um a lot less pressure and even though you think you got to get drafted as high as you can at the end of the day uh you can just anyone who gets drafted can make it so um yeah it was just a a great year. We didn't finish off how we wanted. We uh, lost to York Simcoe in the OHL Cup, and uh, they scored with 10 seconds left in the uh, OMHAs for us to go to the gold medal game. So, um, sort of a sour taste in my mouth towards uh, Byfield and Veerling, but um, it's just, it was a, a great year overall. Yeah, well, because I mean, obviously you know the ohl cup is so big and that's the pinnacle that you want but you guys were tearing through it you like i was looking at the numbers i'm like man cam's putting up 80 points in 35 games and like like you said the record 32 0 and 4 there's got to be some moments on that ice where you're just maybe a little bit bored like hey we're up like eight nothing we've been on an eight game winning streak right now just you know let's pack it up go home yeah, um, usually on those games where we're killing teams, it's more just point night, and especially in minor hockey, you can get it pretty high. So um, I wouldn't say every time I was bored, but um, there were some t- times where it's like, why are we playing these guys? They suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I guess too, you know, sometimes you, a lot of times players go and play at the caliber that they're playing at, right? So if you're playing – teams who were kind of struggling or, you know, just not really hitting where you guys are right now, you might pick up some bad habits for, you know, when you do play the by fields and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Our league wasn't too strong, like uh, all like growing up. So um, the only really times there was a a few teams, usually Guelph and Niagara North, which is St. Catharines. They had pretty good, they had pretty good teams. So 
they would sort of be the teams that we would um, have games with. But uh, usually it was just the Toronto teams and the American teams where we'd have to uh, really turn it up a notch, which um, for the most part we did. And they were always tight games. But yeah, for in the season, it was sometimes it was a uh, out, outmatched game. So. Now, this is a question based off my lack of knowledge of Ontario minor hockey, but do you have to play for the region where you're like located in? Um, so it, it really depends for each league. For my league, which is the OMHA, but there's a two leagues in the OMHA, which is Eastern AAA and then the South Central AAA, which is basically like my league is Oakville, Guelph, Burlington, St. Catharines, Niagara area, Hamilton. And then um, the East is like uh, Whitby, Aurora, Peterborough, so where Cranley was. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like each team, I think in minor mid you're out five imports. Um, so you can really go play anywhere. So there's some guys who are from Oakville that would play in Toronto, but um, for the most part, guys just stay home. Was that a thought that kind of crossed your mind? Maybe play for a Toronto market minor hockey program? Um, I think so, but um, fortunately our team was so good and we'd always compete with the best teams and luckily everyone kind of stayed in Oakville. So we sort of, we had a, a core group of guys that, since uh, so since Tyke we had six guys for eight years and then we had I think nine guys for seven years so we've been staying pretty close together and um, no one left so there was no real reason to leave and uh, really liked it and Davis was there and all my school buddies are on the team so what do you think is a testament that keeps that group together since like Tyke t- right till like U16 U17 uh, you know, having six guys, because I mean, me and my buddies, like in high school, right? Like we were fortunate enough to have like eight of us who were dedicated to like playing every sport, but we always needed to kind of pick up a couple. And I think a big thing for us was just like, obviously small town, Clarenville, Newfoundland, like 6,000 people. So sports yeah. kind of a big recreational thing. So it was a time occupation, but then, you know, for us, it was just more or less the camaraderie. Is it the same thing uh, for you? But you know, because you're competing with so many other things to do, right, with being in such a big city. Yeah, um, I think uh, what sort of helped was one of the guys who also got drafted to Ottawa, his, uh, his dad was the coach for us all the way up. He was the head coach until I think we were in minor Peewee or Peewee, and then he sort of went to an assistant role, and then we had a, another coach come in, Gord Hines, who sort of coached us all the way up till we were drafted, so um and then also in the summer we sort of all had our own sport so I played lacrosse in the summer so did Davis and then some guys played baseball um so it's, we sort of like split off and then we always came back together and I didn't think of just the success too you always want it and when you win a lot you guys uh play together so I think at early age too we won the I guess the highest thing we could win for the five years and then, um, so everyone kind of stayed together because we kept winning. And then after that, um, guys just stick stick with it until uh, minor midget. How much of a multi sport athlete were you in those times? Um, I was pretty big in multi- in a lot of sports. Um, so I think yeah, one year, um, I played. So I played hockey in the winter, and then I um, I kind I wanted to play baseball for a year, but then. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. So then I made, I made the lacrosse team and then I made the baseball team. So uh, I had to try to do both at the same time. But then at the end of the day, um, kind of want to do lacrosse more than baseball. So then um, sort of had to quit the baseball team a little way through the year. And then um, also with school, we always had track and field and volleyball and basketball. So I would always uh, play for those teams. And it was always a super fun experience. What position do you fall in under the baseball category? Um, I was usually an outfielder, so usually a center fielder. And then, um, yeah, so that was uh, usually my position. And then I would uh, hit a lot of singles and doubles. I wasn't a home run hitter, so I would either be really early in the lineup or at the end. You're a speedster. Center field, you know, those singles and doubles, they need you on base to distract the defense more or less because you got the wheels, right? Yeah, basically, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> what did you take from lacrosse into your hockey game because you know it's pretty interesting we had Austin Keating on who's been your teammate for the last 
couple of seasons. And, you know, he really accredits a lot of lacrosse to his style of play. Yeah, I think lacrosse um, prepares you a lot for hitting, um, especially when you're younger. You don't really have co- contact. You do, but not to the extent. So I think, yeah, be able to take a hit is something that you kind of learn lacrosse and then the sort of the um, aggressive nature that you need to have in order to success succeed at the next level. Something that you have in lacrosse because everyone's trying to take your head off um, and super physical. And then um, hand-eye too, just with the ball. Um, and the, when the puck's in the air, or winning face-offs, just the reaction time that you need with the ball hitting off the glass and you got half a second to read it. So lacrosse helped a lot. Uh, I know John Tavares too. He grew up near me, not the same time frame, but um, he, he accredited lacrosse too. So uh, I think it's the best sport for anyone who, who plays hockey because it's so similar, your same rank and pretty similar game plan as well. Yeah, you're a little younger than John Tavares, eh? Yeah, a little, but um, yeah, he grew up five minutes from my house, so. Okay. Have you come across him in the uh, in the days? Yeah. Um, he was there was a ball hockey tournament at uh one of the gyms that I used to go to that they ran, and he used to go there when he was younger too. So, um, right into him, met him there, and then um, Sam Gagne, um, his house is uh two three doors down from me is his old house and which his dad is now my agent so um full circle kind of thing yeah no that's that's crazy did you get the chance to uh kind of pick the brains of those guys at all um no not really it's sort of just high i think playing ball hockey there's some other um things to think about and maybe a couple beers after but um (laughs) yeah sort of pick the brain of uh the dad but not so much Sam yeah. or John. Because that's always something that I find super interesting is, you know, you're so young and now you kind of have to make your first business decision, which is, you know, kind of an agent. When did that kind of register for you as a thought of someone who you wanted to get? And why did you land on, you know, Ganya's dad? Um, it was a, it was a pretty lengthy experience. Um, I think it would have been between minor Bantam and Bantam. I think, uh, people started approaching me and my family just sort of asking what we were looking for and um just with uh Dave Gagne and Jeff Jackson there with four group who's now Wasserman um they sort of had what we were looking for they're from Oakville they're both local people um they have they have a reach with uh because they have guys like McDavid so they're not too small but um they're, they uh, don't overload guys like um, maybe some other agencies try to pick up as many guys as they can and then uh, see where it goes. But um, for me, um, they, they had the perfect amount. And then um, two of my teammates are, are from Oakville also signed with them. So sort of uh, all went through it together, which was nice. Is that a void of confidence, you know, signing with the agency that represents a name like McDavid? Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Like you can say to your buddies, yeah, have the same agent as Connor McDavid. Um, but yeah, they're, they're great. They help you with whatever they need. Dave, he runs skates in the summer, um, for guys to go out and practice and he comes on and he runs the drills too, which is kind of fun because he loves to go hard and he'll do the drills full bore, get out of gas. But, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, pretty cool. They're great. They've, whatever you need, you can call them. They'll answer and uh, help you out with whatever you uh, are asking for. So now let's kind of go into the mindset of the draft. So the OHL 2018 priority draft, obviously you're a top prospect for that. What's kind of going through your head? Do you have high hopes, high expectations? Like, are you really hoping that you go in this particular spot or to this particular organization? Um. I think uh, throughout the year, it sort of changed. I think at the beginning, uh, most of the guys, like, I want to go first round, and that's what everyone wants to do. Um, I think uh, as the year went on, and um, I think especially the Whippy Silver Stick, where uh, I won the MVP of the tournament, um, that was sort of a changing point, I think, where I thought go from first round to see how high I can get. And um, after that, I was just performing as um, in the big games and in the tournaments, that's where you really got to show off. Because even though uh, our league 
were playing in a really good league. Um, they don't really take into account some of those games compared to when you're playing those Toronto teams um, to see how you do for the next level. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't really have any specific spot I wanted to go. I knew um, the night before uh, Jeff called me and uh, he told me that um, Ottawa was a possibility. And then um, ironically enough, the phone rang before the pick. I think we were delayed um, when we were picking, uh, when they were picking. So, um, yeah, there was a phone rang and then like 15 seconds later, they announced the pick. So it was sort of a, you get to know by a phone ring instead of hearing your name called, but it, it was an awesome experience. So wait, the pick came in on the, like the TV or the live stream before you got the phone call from James Boyd? No, the phone call came and then like, it, it was showing the Ottawa 67 logo and then like it rang a few times and then it said it. And then I was like, oh, this is for me. <laughs> how's how's that moment feel reflect on that one for me um it, it's a surreal experience especially sharing with my family um they're putting so much effort time and money um for being able to get into this situation that can't thank them enough um it was a really cool experience um after the pick kind of uh soaked in a bit but then went back to watching to see where my teammates would go because Two others went in the first round, and then we had some guy, a, two, a guy in the second, and then so on, and then end up 14 of the uh, 17 guys on the team got picked. So we had a uh, some of the guys came over to my house that night, and we kind of had a little draft party, um, congratulating everyone. But um, it was just a great experience, and um, I love it in Ottawa, so it's a great spot. You, uh, you're the high, you were the highest ranked out of that team though, eh? So you're probably throwing a few chirps. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you always have bragging rights against them, but, um, Luke has the new bragging rights with, uh, the NHL draft. So we'll hopefully, uh, I can get picked this year. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. But right now, yeah, Luke has the, has the most. Yeah, that's true. Eh? I guess NHL unfortunately trumps OHL. Yeah. Now, in terms of, you know, yeah, because I mean, you mentioned the NHL draft and like you look at the guys who are around you in that OHL draft, Quentin Byfield, Jamie Drysdale, Cole Perfetti. Is there added pressure, you know, just being amongst that group in terms of just like scouting and where you fell in the OHL draft? Um, sort of, uh, kind of, I would say, um, everyone has their own talents and everyone has their own strengths. Um, I think everyone knew Byfield was going number one, just the potential that he has. And he was already 6'3", 200 pounds by minor midget. So pretty enticing for any team. And then um, Jamie, he's also, both of them are with the same agency that I am. So kind of know the two. Um, but everyone knew he was the best defenseman. So he was going high. Um, and then Cole, we're good buddies as well. Um, so we kind of knew everyone at the top who we were going. And um, it was more a matter of team's personal opinion. I think everyone uh, showed what they could do and everyone um, had their own strengths, which um, falling to Ottawa was a great spot for me. And I wouldn't want to get picked anywhere else. But um, yeah, it was just uh, cool to see what teams thought of uh, what guys did all year. Yeah, well, that's definitely a class that's really going to have an impact in, you know, well, I mean, it has had an impact in the OHL, but then obviously in the NHL too for years to come. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely be looking out for them, kind of seeing who gets the, who gets the nod first to play in a game. And I think, well, someone will have bragging rights because right now Stoops is the only guy my age who's playing. So um, it's sort of just seeing every night who's getting called up if, I know uh, Cole has a chance. I know Quentin has a chance. I know Jamie does. And hopefully Quinter gets in the game too, too. So um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's a, it's an exciting time, man. Like there's a, there's a lot of great names going around. Yeah, definitely. Um, the team, the league's getting younger. Um, there's guys who are like um, Kale McCarr, who's still considered a, young guy in the league but he's one of the best defensemen in the league and then McKinnon and um I'm a Tampa Bay fan so 
Hedman and Stamkos and Kucherov and Vasilevsky are some guys I like to watch. So um, it just this the year will definitely be different. Just seeing the Canadian matchups and all the divisions. Right now, it doesn't seem too many rivalries, but we haven't watched uh, Calgary Edmonton yet, so I'm hoping to watch that game soon. How do you become a Tampa fan living in Oakville? Um, so one of my good buddies, Cam Garvey, um, he was a St. Louis, St. Louis fan. He was a Tampa fan. And then um, Sam Coast, I think that year he scored, I think the, he scored 50. And then I kind of tagged along with him as like, Sam Coast is my new favorite player. So that was kind of my reasoning. Sam Coast has been my favorite player for, I think I was think it was eight or nine. Um, so that's more of a player than a team rather than just take Tampa. So if Stamkos had to went to the Leafs, you would have been a Leafs fan? Um, I'm still a casual Leafs fan. I'll cheer for them if they're not playing Tampa. I feel like everybody but, um, in the GTA area is a casual Leafs fan. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have got a few buddies who are diehard Leafs fans, but um, yeah, I think growing up, Leafs weren't good, and you kind of want to cheer for a team that was good, and Tampa had some runs to the finals and conference finals, so they're a team I stuck with, but um, yeah, Leafs are, I guess, the Canadian team I like and Tampa's the American team I like. I'm curious, what do you think of the Bubbles Stanley Cup? Is that tainted in any way in your eyes? Um, I, I think it was a pretty good experience. I think Quinter went through it too, so I'll can I ask him about it. But um, I think it was um, definitely different. I know some of the guys who I worked out with during the summer, they, they were in it, so kind of asked them how it was like and they said that uh, pretty strict, and um, although none of them played games, they said it was a really cool experience. And I think just for the first time for those guys playing with no fans, definitely something different and all the COVID protocols, but uh, it worked and Tampa won, so I'm happy. <laughs> well, no, because um, I'm a Dodgers fan, so I got to see the Dodgers win the World Series for the first time, right? So I've been celebrating yeah. it, and, you know, I think – it's not like anybody's under different circumstances and there's an advantage. So I think all the championships in this like COVID period are just as legitimate yeah. as any other ones, but my buddies don't like to give me the credit and they, they're all Jays fans, obviously, and uh, one Red Sox fan. So they just love to give it to me just saying that that world series doesn't count. So I, I'm trying to accumulate as much evidence and uh, testimonies as possible to be like, yeah, no, this was a, a legit world series guys. Leave me alone. Yeah, um, I think whoever won during COVID, it can't really put an asterisk to it because you went through a whole kind of different um, circumstance and atmosphere that you had to win to. It, it was still even. No one had home ice advantage for the NHL. I think uh, MLB was a little bit different because some teams got to host more games than others. But um, for the NHL, same rink, same ice. Everyone was, I guess, not the whole, same hotel. But um, yeah, so... I think especially there was an extra round too. So uh, gave some teams like Montreal who weren't in the playoffs, they got into the playoffs. So I think uh, it was definitely a testament to the teams and the players just gearing up after two months of waiting is something hard to do. So uh, I think any championship, if you go four rounds of the championship. It's interesting too, because it's almost like they went back to their minor hockey days, right? Like that tournament style, one ring yep. you're in the same town the whole weekend you know you're chatting with the buddies i wonder if they had any uh solid canteen foods like the you know fries and gravy is uh well what, what's big out here is uh it, it's called a mess it's fries dressing and gravy with wieners on it uh so that that's a big yeah. canteen seller so a lot of a lot of minor hockey kids out in newfoundland used to you know muck those in between periods yeah, um, I'm sure the team's pretty stayed on top of guys' nutrition, but um, <laughs> I, I watched some of the uh, NBA um, videos that they came out with, with the chefs and what they were doing. So I think pretty similar um, thing that they did. Um, I think guys definitely had a few cheat meals on the day off, but um, for the most part, they know it, why they're there and um, put some good fuel in the body. Um, yeah, no, 100%. They're definitely not eating like the way uh my newfoundland minor hockey team was uh, eating I i'm curious do you yeah. have any like 
just I'm literally thinking of like old memories and long story short one year we were in Bell Island and it's the only provincial medal I have for hockey cam and we won the bronze medal but anyways yep. they sold deep fried Mars bars at the canteen there and basically our pregame speech for some weird reason was our coach basically telling us this was like I want to say we were like U15, U14. He basically just told us like, hey, listen, like you go and win this, like win this game. I'm buying everybody here and your parents like deep fried Mars bars. And that became a chant. Like I shit you not, it became a chant in our locker room, like deep fried Mars bars, deep fried Mars bars. We went out, we won like six to three. And then sure enough, he went and placed the order in. He ordered one for all of us and like our parents. So like the canteen there nearly had a heart attack because they had to do all of a sudden 30 of them. But I'm willing yeah. to bet that, you know, top OHL prospects, you guys aren't doing that, eh? Um, no, there's a <laughs> – in our in my league, we uh, we play a team called Grey Bruce, which um, is kind of, let's say, 20, 30 minutes north of Owen Sound. So, for a minor hockey team, we always bust up there. So, it was like kind of had the um, bus trip before the OHL. Um, I don't know why they're in our league, considering they're so far away from everyone else. Mm-hmm. I think they're in between like the Northern leagues and us. So they kind of stuck them with us, but they had, they had a old school snack bar and there was always a pea meal bacon sandwiches there that for some reason, all the parents wanted. So we'd always have to wait like 20 minutes after everyone's on the bus. Cause they're still ordering them and getting them. And then the rink was freezing too. So um, anything that could warm you up was uh, something that they'd buy. Oh man, let's uh, kind of get back on track into your your rookie season. Uh, Ottawa, you know, you're pretty fortunate that like throughout the regular season, you saw a lot of action, you know, with a really yep. deep team. That's got to be huge for you, right? To see guys like, obviously like Sasha, Ty Felber, and get to learn from them. Yeah, I think um, Chemer was definitely a guy I learned from the most, just him being center, playing the World Juniors, kind of being – the lead, the leader on our team, we had multiple, but uh, he was one of the top ones. Um, yeah, just being able to be around those guys and see the pro, how maybe Ty wasn't the pro sometimes because he was a super light guy, but um, Sasha and especially Mikey too, when he came, um, he kind of took all us young guys under his wing and we'd go for sushi with him sometimes, just um great guy. Um, but yeah, the first year was definitely – something I'll never forget. Um, fortunately, I got to play in a couple of playoff games. And um, when we were playing Oshawa and the uh, game four when Marco got hurt, uh, I went from being a scratch to the first line center. So that was uh, definitely a, a cool experience that not many people can say. Um, and then just at the beginning of the year, um, our very first game, we played Sudbury and we showed up 30 minutes before the game, usually when you show up two hours. So um, you didn't really have any time to uh, get the j- jitters and going. So it was sort of get there. You got five minutes to get to get dressed and get on the ice, which was um, something that I think uh, was definitely helpful without overthinking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm curious because, I mean, in terms of all that, like you're going through everything. And then once the pieces kind of come in at the trade deadline, uh, and you're looking to kind of make a run when like Lucas comes in and Kyle as well. What are you really like taking once you kind of get that news that you've kind of fallen into now this like rotational role? Um, it was definitely some hard news. I think uh, everyone was at school and we're all just talking when the trade deadline seeing what we were doing. Um, but t- I took it that it's a learning experience. Um, we kind of, took a, a different approach with me and a few other guys um, with Alec and me. We were kind of like the forward and the D that went through uh, Sean Young's kind of off season training, but be ready for the season as well. Um, so we were, we were always in great shape and um, work hard in practice and make sure we're ready. So um, I got in four games in the playoffs. So um Two times when Maxi got suspended, then Bitsy got suspended, and then Marco and uh, got a score on the Sportsnet game against Hamilton, which is pretty cool. Um, so it was uh, it was nice to uh, be able to see that all the hard work paid off during uh, the times that we weren't playing. 
Yeah, that was the goal, right? The in the, in the Hamilton game because you had one goal in those four games, right? It was Hamilton. Yeah. So the first game, uh, I kind of had a wide open net, and the the goalie robbed me. So I was like, "Come on!" Uh, it took me half a season to score my first one, but then the second game, um, Bitsy kind of I I poked it to Bitsy, and then Bitsy kind of went to the net and lost it, and then scramble and the puck went on my stick, and I just shot in a wide open net. So. It wasn't the nicest goal, but um, to get the first playoff goal off the back in, I guess, four periods was pretty uh, pretty fun compared to half a season. <laughs> tell me tell me about that first OHL goal, man. How are you feeling that once that happens? Break me through the uh, play, actually. Take me right through and then tell me how you felt. Uh, um, it was definitely a big sigh of relief. Um, coming home to Davis chirping me, oh, you haven't scored your first goal yet kind of thing was uh, he got in my ear a lot about it, but um, I scored in the first game that we got back. Um, again, uh, the puck went up the uh, right side of the neutral zone, sort of a regroup breakout. And then um, I'm not sure who passed it to Bitsy, but I was on the left wing and he was kind of coming through the middle. And then um, he kind of, we went on a two on one. Um, I was sort of a, a hat. Um, ahead of him but the triangle underneath the d stick was pretty there and the goalie um dylan from niagara um he thought bitsy was gonna shoot and bitsy sauced it over his stick and another wide open net but um it was definitely uh, a great experience a uh, great goal to score finally and um just a lot of relief and uh joy after i scored yeah it's definitely got to be a special moment what'd you say to bitsy for the for the pass um, yeah, I was saying great pass, Bitsy. Um, similar to a guy this year. Um, I guess you haven't you've been following the team, but uh, Tommy Johnson. He he scored his first goal uh, at the right the last goal I guess of the season, um, which was nice for him because he's been working so hard all year. Um, so y- you know that feeling when the sigh of relief of your your uh, grip and your stick too tight. You've missed a couple really good chances, and it finally goes. Yeah, no, Johnson. I uh, I haven't met him, but I was definitely. I think, I think I was there for half of that game or something like that. Like I I know I was there. I was either following it or or whatnot. But yeah, man, what a moment that was. That was definitely uh, incredible. And it wasn't shortly after that that I mean the season got locked uh, locked down. Like I think what you're looking at almost a week maybe. Yeah, um, I think that game was on a Sunday, and then um, Thursday night the whole uh Rudy Gobert situation with COVID happened and then like the games got canceled and then everyone was talking in the morning when we we were at practice um are we gonna play this weekend or are we not and then um we went through practice and then after practice when we were all at school there was news that season would be stopped and then hopefully they wanted to continue it a month later but unfortunately with how COVID was going and still is we weren't able to play and then continue our uh, our run for redemption do you think in a way you haven't even really tapped say your full potential in the OHL and you have a lot more to showcase because I mean that rookie season you know like I said you're in that role player and now this year you know you kind of get into a groove of it but it, it cuts short and obviously the playoffs is such a different animal so you don't even really kind of get to experience that, which, you know, would have been another great playoff run for you and a lot of incredible experiences. Yeah. Um, I definitely think it'll be weird. Um, especially if we aren't able to play this season, kind of, um, you're going from your second year with your draft year and you still got, um, a bunch of older guys playing with you that you can get to learn from. And then all of a sudden you're that older guy who's the other people are learning from you. Um, so, so, big step to take but I think just having a that uh mindset that um you're out there for a reason and be, um you got to be a leader and show, uh, lead by example is something that I'm going to take and um yeah so uh it'll be uh definitely um a weird feeling but um definitely something that I'm ready for mm-hmm. you know we've kind of made the comparison of you know, playoff and regular season experience that that first regular season goal compared to the first playoff goal, obviously the playoff one came within four periods in the regular season. You had to wait a half a season for it. 
how different is the emotions in each one? Like, are you just as fired up for the regular season one as the playoff one? I'm curious what the mentality is for each of those and the initial reaction. Um, so the regular season one was at home and then the uh, playoff one was away. So I think um, just the waiting and missing out a penalty shot in Sudbury didn't score or a couple breakaways didn't score. So then um, I think it, it was definitely the relief came to mind. And like, finally, it was probably a word I said in my head. Um, and then I think in uh, Hamilton, it was more like, um, I want to show what I can do. And um, when I scored, it's like um, the hard work paid off kind of thing and more just uh, pumped up that we scored. And I think it was the first, I think it was the second goal of the game or the first, can't remember. So to get the, the boys going and whenever they see um, a rookie score and he got in the lineup, it's uh, everyone kind of rallies around that. So it was uh, definitely um, more of a excitement, but, um, definitely the, both of them are really memorable. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned just kind of the draft year and the prospects. I mean, obviously, scouts this year have such a hard – well, I mean, I guess the last, you know, year and a, a bit now almost uh, – such a harder role trying to, you know, really get a feel on particularly like your skill sets and how you guys are doing – because you just really haven't played the games like you would have at this point. I know a few of your, you know, counterparts have, you know, kind of hopped overseas and started playing in some like men's leagues in, in Europe and whatnot. Is that kind of on your radar? Um, not so much really. I think just um, there's a lot of um, unknowns right now with our season. And um, we had a Zoom call yesterday and they're saying that if we're able to play it, uh, it won't be like, Hey, we're playing in a month. It's, Hey, we're playing in five days. So it's kind of like if you go over there, um, I know Alex Belanger and our team, he's, he's been over in Finland and um, I think he, he just switched teams, but he, he played one game and I think a couple months. So um, it's, it's very situational. So um, I think it's definitely an option if uh, the, our season is um, keeps getting pushed back or canceled, but right now it's more just um, get ready for this year and, um, if this year doesn't happen, then, then we'll see. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations for, you know, return? Obviously, this is going to be completely different than anything you've ever experienced. How do you think, uh, you know, you're going to handle it and just the organization as a whole? Um, I, I think the organization is doing a tremendous job right now, just um, letting us being informed all the time and getting us ready. So um, we've had um, – hours and hours and hours of zoom calls over the last um eight i guess yeah eight months or something we've during the summer we'd have three hour zoom calls once a week so those were uh very lengthy and we got a lot of the stuff out of the way and did a did a bit of system so guys the new guys are um pretty well into it and the uh the ownership is can do is uh doing whatever they can to help us out and then personally um kind of on a, on a hot streak right when the season ended um I was uh playing with Grammar and Joey and we were clicking on on all cylinders and then unfortunately it stopped so that kind of sucked just um finally um seeing seeing the points after uh come after all the hard work and then it cut short with my draft year it was uh pretty disappointing but now it's just uh continue that um mojo and um show why they picked me so high this year and um, kind of take the reins and um, drive, drive the bus. Well, even after all that too, you know, going into this year's draft, you know, some people still had you projected to go around like that hundred to 200 range. That's gotta be a nice kind of like silver lining to it all. Right. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, kind of don't really want to look at that too much just because um, it's, it's not an NHL team's list. It's a, someone's personal opinion. But, um, yeah, it's definitely cool to see your name up there, just people noticing what you're doing, especially uh, at the end of the year when um, I, had, I think I had um, 12 points in the last 11 games. Um, but, um, you know, things happen. COVID happened. You can't really control that. So uh, we'll just look forward to the future. Yeah. Well, it's funny because, I mean, the biggest thing with – 
in terms of like all the scouting stuff and stuff like that, I, I always tell people, I'm like, you never really, and this is for all aspects of the game, right? Like why guys get the C, why guys get the A. It's like, unless you're like in that locker room and are in those team meetings and stuff like that, you really have like no idea what is going on and kind of the whole dynamic in between like different teammates and coaching staffs and yeah. what general managers and scouts are looking for. Right. So <laughs> it's uh, you've seen it time yeah. again, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially with the guys that we've had in our locker room um, with Marco and Quinter last year, just how uh, how much effort and dedication they put in. And then the year before with um, Feli just lighting it up and having a blast doing it. So kind of had a, you could see how some guys, how different guys approach it. And then Sasha, um, when it came to game time, he was always ready to play. And Mike, you didn't really want to disturb him when he was playing or else he'd kill you. So, um, <laughs> so um, it was uh, definitely cool to see. And um, yeah. No, it was uh, unreal to watch uh, Mikey and, and Sasha and those guys and see how they operate, right? And one thing, too, even, you know, still on this point, like, you know, Sasha ends up going in the in the sixth round, right? And we've had him on yeah. on this show and whatnot, and just him talking, <laughs> and, you know, people can kind of go check the, at that episode, but just his mentality and he, how he responded to, you know, being a six-round pick, he was like, okay, yeah, like, let's go kind of thing, right? And at the end of the day, it just shows that initial statement that, you know, numbers and rankings, all of it doesn't matter. It's more or less what you put into the day-to-day -day and how you perform on the ice and doing it in a fashion where you're just loving life. Yeah, definitely. It's, it uh, adds a chip to your shoulder. Um, you, you, you hope you get drafted. Uh, you, you put all this effort for the last 18 years too, but if you don't get drafted the first time, uh, you can't say that's it. It's over. You still got the next year's draft and um right now it's we'll see what happens with that just not being on the play but if not then it's just uh the, ba the basic thing is getting the contract that you need to sign to play pro um like Fally didn't get drafted but um he was able to in his overage year just work hard and um get that contract i was looking for um possibly he did get drafted but um that last year he wanted to prove a point why he should have been signed and he did that so we had some really good role models around here to show that um, even if you don't get drafted, um, you still got a lot of options to go play pro hockey. And um, if you work hard and continue uh, the path, then um, great things will happen. Dude, I know great things are going to happen for you. I'm, I'm super stoked and I can't wait to send you a DM being like, Hey man, congrats on getting drafted to whoever it is. Cause I know for sure that's in your future. Just being able to see your work ethic and how you apply in all aspects of everything. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll be looking forward to that DM too when it comes. <laughs> so, you know, now a little bit of the academic side, because we kind of mentioned at the beginning, you're at Queens and stuff like that. Now you're also like excelling in these courses. Like you're, you're doing well, you're getting like the reputable. Um, was it, uh, I'm forgetting what I saw now, but you're you're a smart dude. What do you accredit that to? Um, I think it was just um my my mom and my dad, um, especially my mom, she wanted academics to always be uh first and um just show you hard working and um a student athlete and you can do multiple things. I think uh one of the things they say is hockey can always go so long, so um you sort of gotta have something after that, regardless if you uh, play 20 years in the NHL. Um, most of those guys are under 40 when they retire. So just you got half a life to live, but you have no idea what you're going to do. And um, I think just having a passion for something else that you want to do is something that um, everyone should have. Um, our team, they may, uh, they gave us the Brian Burke book to read and he, he keeps talking about academic first. And um, if you're not a good student, um, he won't pick you. So um that's sort of another thing where um, you don't really think about it, but GMs and teams are looking at everything you do, not only on the ice, but if you're a good student, if you're a good person in the community. What are you hoping to, because we chatted about business and I mean, that can yeah. obviously be any realm of a, of a future. Do you see yourself more in that entrepreneurial standpoint or are you kind of like in an office 
work in the books or something like that? Um, I haven't thought about it too far. Um, I went with uh, my coach just being a trip, but we can't all go to take your kid to work day all at the same place. So um, I went with my coach who, who worked at TD Bank with another one of my teammates who's, who's uh, dad works there. So um, got to gotta see what they kind of do there. Um, it's definitely an, an option that I would like to consider, um, but nothing's set in stone yet. If I uh, want to go entrepreneur or maybe do something business hockey related or hockey offside. So I think it's just uh, keep the option open. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, first things first, you got to step back on that, that ice and, and live out the rest of the, uh, the junior seasons, right? We don't want to get, we don't want to get too, too far into the future here. No, not at all. Still, still a teenager. So still got to live out those glory days until you got a lot more responsibility. <laughs> hey man, listen, I'm uh, turning 24 this year. It, it hits you like a brick wall. Yeah. Um, being first year university, it's, definitely a, a change but just having friends with older siblings and they're graduating and they're having to rent an apartment and to see how uh, how expensive it is and um being a work in a nine to five job uh something that um i'd rather not do i'd rather be playing in the nhl or some kind of pro hockey but um you know if hockey doesn't work out you've always got to have a backup plan mm -hmm. yeah no for sure it's definitely important i mean the biggest thing is just finding things that you love and running with it. Right. And it, there's no yeah. such thing as a, a structure anymore in that nine to five for the most part. Right. Yeah, totally. Um, I think just having that hobby, like growing up, it's uh, usually another sport that you play in and kind of have to choose one to pursue, but then you got to have another hobby. So some guys, it could be uh, school or video games or another sport if you can still do that. But um, yeah, I think just, Having other things to look forward to rather than just hockey, hockey, hockey is uh, something they should do. And uh, yeah. yeah. That's interesting because that's actually been kind of a recurring theme on a lot of these episodes lately is finding your passion in, in other things and, and kind of running with it. If you weren't all in in hockey right now, per se, what do you think that would be for you? Do you think you're, uh, you know, streaming on Twitch or are you maybe looking into the musical background of things? Um, I really thought about that too much. I think it'd probably be another sport. Um, I love being active, um, getting off, off a chair and going outside or doing something. Um, so, um, I'm really into golf right now. Um, who knows if that would be a career, a career path for me, but, um, yeah, that'd be something that I think I, I would have looked into when I was younger. Um, I, I, I love playing golf and then, um, I broke my wrist playing hockey. Um, so that kind of set the golf thing off for a couple of years, but now I've kind of picked it up and, um, I'm not the greatest player, golf player, but I enjoy playing, which uh, I guess is all that matters right now. <laughs> I was going to ask how, uh, how good of a golfer you are. Who's, uh, who are you golfing with parents, brothers? Um, it's usually my brothers and my buddies, um, in Ottawa, it's usually snowing the whole time. So I can't really get out there. Um, but usually it's just, uh, school friends or hockey friends that I go with. There's, uh, usually, uh, maybe like three or four different groups of guys that I like to go out with and we kind of just go all over Oakville GTA area and find the courses. And, uh, funny story that I, uh, I went golfing with my brother and, um, one of our best buddies and his brother on the 21st of December, which not many people think golf courses are open, but for some reason we found one. That was uh, the one that we usually go sometimes go to in the summer. And um, the first hole, um, my brother, he, he's hitting like a seven iron and uh, he, he shoots it and we think it's short, but then somehow it lands on the uh, um, fringe. And then the next hole, it's like a par three over water. And uh, I just want to test it. So I hit a, I hit a ball with like a, a stinger to start skipping on the, on the ice. So uh, there's no water hazard anymore. It's just uh, usually the, uh, the water as your uh, extra playbook. <laughs> hey, you know, play smarter, not harder, right? Yeah, basically. Who's the best golfer out of the bunch? Who's got the bragging rights there? Um, right now, I would say in the family, I'm the best golfer. Um, I can hit it the furthest, and 
Um, I, I won't say I can hit it super far, but I can hit it straight. So uh, I'm not off in the trees very often. Um, but with the group of buddies, um, one of my buddies, he can hit it like 320 and he, uh, he has a golf simulator in his basement. So whenever we go over there, um, not right now with COVID, but before you could, uh, could go practice, um, he, he's a pretty good golfer. He, uh, he doesn't have a handicap because he doesn't really care that much. But uh, when you play with them, um, you usually don't win. <laughs> Oh man, I love the uh, I love watching some people just like the ones who go for golfing for fun and uh, just kind of tagging along and seeing how many uh, how many drops there are and, and things of that nature. So it's like, okay, yeah, no, you didn't shoot four under par. You shot into the woods eighteen times and just laid the ball on the course wherever it landed. Yeah, um, I played with Maxi one time um, in the summer, so um, he. We were he was finding a lot of balls, but it was a great time playing with him. And then uh, watching the sandbaggers from the Barstool guys, Paul Bissonnette is definitely a a guy. Uh, it's pretty funny to watch golf and just his uh, enthusiasm. He never gets a good shot, or uh, how mad he gets when he doesn't. Man, it's pretty funny. Like you know, sometimes it's a lot of pressure being a hockey player because it just kind of comes with the territory that you also got to be half decent at golf because it seems like that's really the uh the off-season choice of of activities right so i'm sure those guys are getting invited all the time and they're just like you know they're competitors so they're like ah oh, shit like i'm terrible at this i gotta figure out how to be better and, and stuff but then you know it's almost like one of those things that you just can't escape almost like a dentist appointment yeah pretty much um i have a, a pretty similar slap shot um driver where the if you watch it on video, it, it looks pretty similar to my slap shot. So I'm um, trying to change that a bit, but uh, not a lot of hip rotation on the back when I'm swinging. So uh, they, they call it the slap shot. But um, yeah, um, with all, all the pros, I know everyone gets out to golf. It's just uh, something that you can get outside, get outdoors and not too physical. Um, get a couple beers in you when you're, when you're legal, still can't, still can't drink yet. Um, that's uh Less than a month away till I'm 19, so then, uh, then I can. Know, but you know what's funny? We're we're filming this now. I'm I'm gonna check my calendar right quick because your birthday's February 20, 14th. So Valentine's Day. Oh, the 14th. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So actually, you know what? So your birthday and Greels Reels's birthday is the same time. Uh, just a, a fun fact because that is our our special Ooh. one year. Yeah, our one year uh, birthday, basically. So uh, we're, we're sharing that birthday. But then, uh, yeah, I think you're, you're a week after, week two, at, two weeks after. So, hey, you know what? For the sake of uh, it being posted after your birthday, happy 19th birthday, Cam. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll, I'm looking forward to it with uh, COVID. It won't be, won't be the same, but um, I think everyone knows where everyone goes on their 19th birthday, the first thing they can do. So. Um, <laughs> Hey, well, you know what? I hope you enjoy your uh, your first beer with uh, with your household and your family. Yeah, um, it'll definitely hopefully go down smooth. <laughs> oh man, hey, this has been a lot of fun. It's been nice, uh, you know, catching up with you. That's everything and, and more that I had for you. You know, this is the part of the show where I just hand it over to you. Uh, so it's your show now. Anything that you want to chat about, you know, life lesson, childhood story, anything at all, uh, it's uh, your show. Um, one thing I can talk uh, come to mind right now would probably be uh, the bus trips and the finals with you just talking about your camera stuff and um, how, how uh, until you got into photography but um, yeah how did you uh, start into the photography uh, business you want if you want to call that yeah I mean it's kind of for myself I like this has always kind of been what I wanted to do so when I was in third grade uh, funny enough, I told my third grade teacher I wanted to be an author, uh, mainly because I found like, do you remember Robert Munch? Like, yeah. So, you know, like when you're a kid, sometimes it's just like, oh, that dude's got the same name as me. So I'm gonna like, I'm just going to be a fan. So we were getting like read a lot of those. So I was like, oh, I want to be an author. And then uh, she told me it wasn't a real job. <laughs> she goes, think of something else, third grade. So I was just kind of like, oh, okay, but always still kind of held the interest into it and then obviously as you get older and you develop a love for 
sports and stuff like that, um, how it all kind of unfolded more or less is when I was in high school playing hockey, uh, a family friend of mine, his wife passed from breast cancer. So I uh, did this fundraiser. For, I would like, I played goalie and essentially I just did like one of those classic, like every save I made, you donate like 25 cents. Right. So I did that over a couple yeah. of seasons in high school hockey and raised like five grand. So at that point, the local newspaper kind of did a story on me. And from meeting with Jonathan and chatting with him, he just kind of found out that I had an interest in, you know, getting into like sports broadcasting and just like photo and journalism and all that stuff. Uh, then at the same time, Eastlink got me on as like a volunteer host for the Central Senior Western Hockey League, which is a senior league here. Um, I don't know if you know these names, uh, like guys like who played in that league were like Terry Ryan. Uh, he was drafted, I believe, eighth overall by Montreal uh, in like 95. Um, um, he, he's the only on senior league I can think of. Oh, sorry. The only senior league I can think of is the uh, the one in Quebec that always fights. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, this one, uh, yeah, this one's at Newfoundland. So like guys like Terry Ryan, he's uh, been on Spitting Chicklets before actually, so uh, he's been, he, he's played in that league a long time. Uh, a lot of great, great hockey players. Aaron Ashram actually came over for a little bit. I'm not sure if you yeah, remember I know who that is. Yeah. The, the fighter for the NHL, he came over for like one, one season with, uh, with Gander Terry actually, I think was the big driving force to getting him over there. So like a lot of talented guys, uh, in that league, like definitely a lot older than you, like <laughs> they're, you know, playing yeah. in late twenties, thirties, forties. Um, so as I started like hosting that show, the guy who did the story on me for the breast cancer fundraiser thing, he, uh, we just kind of kept bumping into each other at the rink and he was just like, Hey, like, uh, you know, we need freelance reporters if you're interested kind of thing. So I said, yeah, sure. Like, uh, let's do it. So we signed like a freelance contract and then obviously every story kind of needs a, uh, needs a photo to it. So it kind of started there. And then when I got to university, I met a guy, Jordan McDonald, who was really into it and he kind of got me more so into it. And then when I reached out to the football team, um, you know, kind of running more so the social media and stuff like that, it was like, oh, okay, like I don't have like a lot of stuff to post. Right. So let's just, you know, classic mindset of myself is like, all right, well, I'll just do it myself kind of thing and start taking like more photos so I could just have, more of stuff to keep that account active. And then, yeah, it just kind of grew from there. And then uh, like, you know, obviously working for the football team in, in university, we have guys go on and play in the CFL and the Red Blacks and the Red Blacks are owned by OSAG and OSAG owns the 67s. And then, you know, I hop in and get access and to shoot some games at the 67s. And then I meet a guy named Cam Tolnai. And, you know, a few months later, uh, probably, well, geez, actually, holy smokes, it's been more than a year now. We're, we're here chatting on a podcast. Yeah, that's a, a pretty lengthy story, but it's pretty cool. Um, did you go to this? Were you in Sudbury when we played them for the... Um, in the no, the only away playoff games I went to were I went to the whole Guelph series and then I did the um Oshawa, the game four, yeah. So that's it. I didn't do yeah, any Sudbury or any uh Hamilton, yeah. I was wondering because that was the uh, triple overtime game, so um, that was a, a pretty crazy experience, and that was the only uh scratch there, so. Me and Sean Young were standing around for for a while, just hoping that we would score. Yeah, that one. So funny enough, actually, I was working as like a I want to say like guest bartender for a bar down in the Byward Market. Uh, so I was yeah. bartending all night for the first time. I was just kind of like I was there more or less as like I don't. It was weird. They were like doing this whole like different like the regular bartenders would like bring in a bartender kind of thing. So like I, like I have my smart serve and stuff and obviously you got to be qualified, but more or less you just kind of show up and like, you're kind of like the guest bartender and they pump it out on their social media. Like, Oh, like Robert Greeley's bartending here. So anyways, I was bartending that whole night. Now, obviously I'm paying attention to the game because I'm invested in like seeing you guys win. And 
you know, the night's going on and I'm like, okay, yeah, like the game's probably over now. And I like flick it up and it's like, oh, okay, like one, like first overtime or whatnot. And then like, you know, we finish up at whatever hour and like clean everything up and like get the till all, all set. And I get my tips and I start walking away and I'm like, uh, I wonder, I wonder who won and I haul it up and it's like still going. I'm like, holy smokes. Yeah. I, w- I would not have wanted to be a uh, healthy scratch for that game. No, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. It was like behind the scenes, you're kind of like a, a, a chauffeur for the guys at that point. Um, mm-hmm. It was, uh, we got like a pregame meal. Um, I guess postgame meal, you want to say. Um, they usually go, like we got to the bus, but then it was like, it ended up going so long that that meal kind of like serving the guys meals and getting them whatever they want. Um, so no, because later in the year, I, I did kind of experience the same thing. So with the GGs in the Queens Cup, so like the OUA championship uh, against Guelph, it's it's one game and that one went to three overtime. So like, you know, for people who don't like realize, like a lot of these teams, when they are driving to and from these places and especially like leaving right after, all these meals are pre-ordered for a specific time. So guys can just hop yeah. on the bus and, and go right away. So like our pizza is like coming through when like we're like still, I mean, playing for another 40 minutes. Right. So it's, uh, yeah, it really throws the whole schedule off by an immense amount. And unfortunately we didn't even get the result that we wanted. So like we, yeah, had to basically swallow that tough pill and, and drive from Guelph back to Ottawa after a three, uh, three overtimes and, and cold pizza. Yeah, we uh, we ended up because our post game we ended up getting pizza after the game. But yeah, we were uh, running on a lot of gels and snacks in the room. So um, that was. Uh, Be honest with me. Did you sneak one of the hot meals when it when it first arrived? Um, no, I um, I was watching the game when they arrived, and then uh, kind of went in and then just saw them and. There, it was a lot of carb heavy stuff, which I don't think guys wanted to eat. So it was like, uh, grab the chicken off of it and cut it up and give it to them. Man, that's something, uh, you know, it's, it's always funny because when you're on like team staffs, you, you get, you eat what the players eat uh, for a lot of the times. Right. So it's like, yeah. it's always great food, but like sometimes at like 10 o'clock at night when you literally only just like walked around the rink, like with your camera, which I mean, yeah, sure. I, like, I don't want to discredit, like it is in a way physically demanding, but obviously it's not as physically demanding as, uh, you know, playing a game of high level hockey. Right. So when, uh, when yeah. you're just kind of walking around with a camera the whole night and then 10 o'clock you're on the bus and it's just this massive carb heavy meal, you're like eating it and you're always like, yeah, I don't really deserve all these, uh, all this pasta right now. Yeah. There was another story. So the same against Hamilton, um, it was around Remembrance Day when we were playing them. I think, uh, yeah, it must have been game one or, yeah, I'm not sure which game it was, but then uh, I ended up running around the uh, mall right in behind trying to find Poppy. So there, our coaches forgot them. And I went in like, probably like 15 different stores asking and asking. LCBO ran out and I think uh, there was a grocery store. They didn't have any. So I'm like, um, it was the coaches just ended up didn't even get them, but there was a uh, getting a lot of use from the players and the coaching staff when you're not playing is something that happens in Ottawa. <laughs> well, it's it's funny because you uh, you always want to want to do it right, so you're always like, yeah, like let's uh, you know you want to help as much as possible, right? And even that's kind of like my mindset when I go into like locker rooms and stuff like that. And if guys ever like ask like. I more or less always want to be like a positive presence. So that way, you know, yeah. whenever anybody kind of runs into me, like they're, they're feeling up or whatnot, but yeah, like, I mean, just kind of, you always do want to want to be there for you and almost uh, like run, run those errands when, when you're not playing. Eh? It's it's a weird dynamic sometimes. Yeah. It's uh, when you're, when you're on the ice, you kind of want to do whatever you can to help the team when no matter how small it is. So um, it's something that you don't really, um coming into the game thinking you're going to run around the mall but um you sort of just do it and uh they say thank you but um it was uh definitely a stressful trying to find them and uh they, they were expecting them but ended up not getting them 
Yeah, you, you didn't deliver, eh? That's Ralph. Cam, no. Cam Tolmai, great, great golfer, fantastic hockey player, smart dude, queen student, but just terrible poppy collector. No, it was terrible. Yeah, I think uh, it was the day before, so they're all sold out. A little, uh, little too late to put the poppies on. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious now because we kind of talked their road trips, and it's always funny because people really do not – know what goes on behind the scenes sometimes and you really can't find yourself doing a whole bunch of different things I remember yeah. like one year um like three o'clock in the morning like this was like a late late trip like you know driving back from Toronto uh for a night game in football so like by the time everybody gets out it's like three o'clock in the morning and like we're just like driving and we're trying to like make time and whatnot and then all of a sudden like everything just comes to a halt in like the middle of uh, like nowhere, basically. And bus driver hops in and we're all just kind of like, what in the world is on the go? Like what? Like, and then he comes back and it was like probably like 10, 15 minutes. And we're all confused. We're like, you know, guys start chatting. It's like, have we like blown a tire? Like, are we stuck here or stuff like that? And then, you know, basically he just needed to use the washroom. He needed to take a little pee break. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, we've had a couple uh stories just over the last two years with the bus uh one of the times um we were playing oshawa um and there was a massive accident on the highway and we were already running late so i think the game was supposed to start at seven and end up starting at like 8 30 or 9 because we ended up showing up so late and then um another not so great experience for me was on on our longest road trip of the year to uh when we go sudbury to st marie and uh North Bay. I was sick the whole bus ride, so that was uh, not a great experience sitting on a bus for nine hours when you're when you're sick and you don't you don't want to move, but the bus is keeping shaking and you can't really do anything about it. But hey, at the end of the day, the the bus rides are definitely the funnest part of it. Hey, eh? it's got to be. Yeah, um, I think you were you've been a part of it where we have some chance on the bus, but I, I'm not going to say on here. But um, there's we've had we have a couple things that go on our bus when we win and. Um, we get the coaches involved, which is always fun, especially when Bear is happy and um, we get him going. It's uh, always a great time. Dude, when he – listen, man, I – you know, I've chatted with him a couple of times. When that guy is smiling and laughing, the world is just a better place. Yeah, especially, yeah, yeah. When he's not a happy camper, uh, you want to be 100 yards away from him. But um, when he's happy, it's, uh, it, it's great, especially on the ice. He, he loves to give it to you on the ice and chirp you, slash you, and getting the drills and hit you. So um, when, when he's doing that, you know, you're doing something well and the practice is going great, which uh, at the end of the day, uh, he preaches uh, getting better each and every day. And it's not always about the result, but it's about the process. And over time, if you keep doing the same thing every day and getting better, then um, good things will happen. Yeah, well, what's nice too, honestly, is I think, you know, just kind of, I'll, I'll say globally with the, you know, the world juniors, everybody's kind of getting a sense of that. Cause you see a, a couple of clips of him, like messing around with uh, Drysdale out on the ice in practice. And obviously those do pretty well on social and whatnot and take off. Right. He's definitely, uh, definitely creating the reputation as being that, uh, you know, the fun loving uh, coach who, who likes to, you know, pull the, pull the tricks and the pranks on, on practice. And then even, uh, you know, last year, the, when they won gold and the whole, uh, you know, the vert for the, the puck, man. Like, what a what a bring down, basically. What a take down. Yeah, um, he, he has this saying that, um, I'm not sure if he said it um, on TSI or not, but he can either be a teddy bear or grizzly bear, or grizzly bear depending uh, how much effort you put in. So um, <laughs> he's a teddy bear if, if you're putting in the effort and executing, but if you're uh, slacking off and you're uh, – lackadaisical then he he, snap, he turns pretty quick and that's when you don't want to be around him yeah no it, it definitely the the bear the bear nickname definitely makes uh makes a lot of sense what's uh yeah because we've been chatting a lot about road trips what's your favorite road trip though uh of the uh, of the year to do what one are you always excited for um i i like playing in niagara a lot so um usually whenever we, we play there um you always the uh when you go play london um, especially now with Davis, my other, he goes to Western. So, um, with my buddy Luke there, my, my brother, and then all our school friends who go there, that's something definitely I'll be looking forward to just having that, uh, that rivalry and everyone at the game. Um, 
but road trips um usually or anything that's around my around my house so we got um niagara oshawa guelph kitchener mississauga that my parents can come to and an hour away so anything that's really at home or that i could uh sneak sneak home for a bit um the last two years i've been able to um go home for a couple hours um usually just being so far away you can't really get home um and, and only at christmas but been able to uh go home for breakfast or uh or dinner or something so that's usually the mississauga one or two when i i'm pretty looking forward to mm -hmm. yeah no that makes sense it's uh, always special when you get to have uh familiar faces in the crowd and you can yeah, get get mom's cooking yeah um but uh, another thing about Niagara too is they they have the the best hotel at least where we stay at and um so they've got a keg downstairs and they got an omelet bar and a whole, the whole nine yards for breakfast so we always enjoy going there because you know we'll, we'll get fed pretty well um usually we, we always stay at, at the good hotels which uh Ottawa does a great job at but um you, ne you really never know what you're getting for breakfast sometimes it's uh, microwave eggs but there with the omelet part it's definitely uh a lot nicer dude hotel hotel breakfasts man they're hit or miss sometimes like you you very much never know what you're getting into but i know the feeling of like that one road game that's just such a great you know you're getting fed well for for me my favorite was always uh being on coach b staff uh coach barisi who you know uh used to coach the gg's football team he uh He's from Hamilton. So whenever we get to go to McMaster, like whenever we go to McMaster, he, uh, yeah. he used to kind of roll out the red carpet. And uh, so the meal for that one would be uh, like Tucker's, like the all you can eat buffet kind of thing. So that was always yeah, a we, nice little treat. We go there too when we play Hamilton. Um, we stay in Burlington and I think there's a Tucker's just off the highway there that mm -hmm. we, uh, we, we walk across the street and get lunch there usually. Yeah, no, that one's always a, uh, that's always a good one. I got to say, what's, uh, what's in your omelet? What are you putting in your omelet? Um, usually, um, go with some ham, they have bacon, sometimes ham and bacon, but usually just ham, um, cheese, um, green peppers, um, tomatoes, um, maybe onions if I'm, fe if I'm feeling lucky, but, um, don't want a bad breath usually, so um pr pretty simple some mushrooms usually so a lot of veggies some ham some bacon so usually whatever they have but um for the most part if there's always an omelet bar i'm pretty happy yeah, yeah. no I, I man i i love omelets or there, there's always a good one uh it's funny uh you just got me thinking about omelets now and the, there's an omelet bar in the u ottawa cafeteria like the the dining hall or whatnot and yep. it's great but my biggest pet peeve was, so I, for the most part, I've kind of tried to get out of it, but for like when I'm eating omelets, I like them to be like an egg white omelet more so not because yeah. I don't eat the yolk. It's just, I find it too heavy and it's too much and I can never eat it all. Yeah. And my favorite thing was, you know, always going to the U Ottawa cast and just being like, Hey, can I get an egg white omelet? And they would just always either be in a rush or whatnot. And they'd look at me and they go, yeah. And then they would just crack the oak right into the bowl. And you're just kind of like watching them do it. And it's like, did you just like not hear me, not understand me? Or did you just not give two shits? <laughs> you're putting the yolk in anyway. Yeah. Um, the one in Niagara, um, I, it's been the same guy last two years. So I don't want to call it a relationship because you get to see him four times, four, uh, four times in the last two years. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, great guy. And um, he, he does everyone's orders right. And I kind of feel bad for him because there's, whatever 25 guys lining up for an omelet right in a row and um he's got to do it all quickly and but he has a smile on your face and you always got to say thank you but um yeah uh yeah, usually I, no sorry i i was just gonna say i love those like interactions that you get with different people who like the hotel workers and stuff and the ones who are there constantly and you're always seeing them yeah definitely um also with the, the breakfast is the uh, the waffle maker. That's a hot commodity on the team. Um, you, you gotta let Austin Keaton go first because he, he'll have two of those every breakfast. But um, <laughs> after that, it's sort of like Keats usually, Keats definitely goes for, an, uh, goes for it if it's available. Doesn't matter if it's a game day or not. He, he'll, he'll go after his waffles pretty quickly and 
get a couple of them. So it's, then it's like a, a race to see you can get second and third. And um, if you're pretty much behind that, then um, you got to eat pretty quickly because the team loves to eat in about 10 minutes. So you got to, you got to rush. <laughs> Dude, it's, uh, it's so funny, man. Like I, I, I honestly, I miss it. Like the, obviously the different landscape that we're in and it's not as easy to, to do these things, but it's nice to kind of reflect on the memories, even, you know, it was just like, so many like funny stories and things where you almost kind of need to be there even to appreciate it. Like, you know, we'd always stop at the same Loblaws for road trips with football. So now all of a sudden you have two buses with staff. It basically accommodates, like you're looking at like 60, 70 people. And we would roll into this one particular Loblaws at like 11 o'clock in the morning. And they go from like being dead. It's it's actually, it's in the area of like a senior home. So there's always like a bunch of old, retired people who are like picking up their groceries and getting the early discount deals and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden like a university football team comes in and it's priceless to see the look on their faces. Cause they're always just like, what in the world is going on? If it's the first time that they're there when like we roll in and the people in the deli, like, man, my hat goes off to them because our alignment are up there right away and just like cleared out the, the chicken tenders and the Mac and cheese and the, the wedges and, and everything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. For the most part, we, we get to, we're lucky. Um, the team usually stops in an on route, depending how, how far we are. But for the most part, each bus ride is usually over four hours. So I usually stop and throw out the garbage and um, the Tim Hortons there when it's two or two o'clock in the morning and there's two of them. And then they just see the whole team pile in and, it's the only thing open. They're like, Oh no. And then guys order stuff that takes a while or um, they don't want to make all these sandwiches, but they, uh, you ordered it. So they have to. So um, yeah, those hats off to those people. They, they have a, a job that not many people would want to do, but um, yeah. So it's been, it was definitely uh, something that we, we look forward to definitely getting uh, some Timbits or uh, a coffee or uh, something like that from Timmy's. <laughs> yeah. No, man, it's, uh, it's funny how, you know, different sports and stuff like that, but there's still such a translation in, in terms of like similarities for, for how they operate. And yeah, I, the amount of eye rolls I've seen from, from those workers, man, like, do you imagine having everything cleaned up and like, you're pretty much like just gearing up to, to go home for the, the evening after work and like eight eight hours and then a football team or a hockey team rolls in and now all of a sudden everything everything's basically dirty again yeah it's uh definitely something that you don't look forward to always when even during the day when we all come in we always get some looks just to see um who we are and uh where we're from and everyone goes to tim morton's because you only want to go to a a kfc when, when bears around he'll get in your ear about it so it's everyone lines up at Timmy's and try to sneak what you can out of there when he's not looking. But yeah. Um, so usually, usually Timmy's is the one that uh, gets the brunt of, uh, of us going to. Mm-hmm. It's always that the ones who get to go to KFC are the uh, essentially the, they're the veterans who have just put up so many points or touchdowns and passing yards that they just have this reputation now of performing massively on the field that they can go to the KFC on the the bus stop every now and then if they'd like. Yeah, I'm sure if Marco wanted to get some KFC, um, no no one would really say anything to him because uh, when, when you're the leading scorer in the league, um, you can do what you want pretty much. I feel like he's definitely not eating KFC uh, as much though. No. To, you don't get to be the leading scorer in the league. Sure, not even in the league, in the CHL, wasn't he? He was um, – Yeah. He was- but yeah, so yeah, <laughs> leading point getter in the uh, in the whole CHL. Yeah, I don't think you're uh, you're stopping for KFC much. No, I also but just being it from from Europe, being from Austria, I don't think KFC is a a staple of their diet either. So um, maybe if it was some schnitzel, Marco would be otherwise. So no, he loves that. But um, yeah, yeah have, usually just Tim Hortons in it. Have you tried schnitzel before? Pardon? Have you tried schnitzel before? Yeah. So, so I'm part Hungarian, so um, yeah. my uncle always makes it when we open over his house and um, make it from scratch. So it, it's pretty good. Um, I, I like steak a little bit more, but um, it's it's still pretty good. 
And we had it lots when uh, I had the chance to go over to Germany with the men's hockey team because their head coach used to play pro over there for a few years. Uh, so we had it for a yeah. couple of meals uh, over there, man. It's fantastic. I loved it. Yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, something that's a little bit different than the average meat that you'll eat, but it's uh, it's definitely something if it's cooked right, definitely tastes well, but overcook it gets pretty chewy. It's, uh, if it's homemade, then it, you're pretty good. Yeah, I can I can definitely see that, man. How do we how do we get down this road of of food? Uh, I don't know. I think we got some bus rides, and then yeah. Loblaws came up, and then Timmy. So. <laughs> and then it just uh, <laughs> went downhill, but down downhill from there. But it, I mean, not not at all. This has been a great chat, honestly. Um, hey, man, it's good seeing you stay safe take care really appreciate you coming on and and your time this has been a blast yeah thank you for having me it's it's been great it's great to catch up i know we had some conversations back when uh you were hanging on the team and uh i know we all miss you taking some great photos that we can put on instagram and just make sure to tag you it's the only thing um but yeah so thank you very much hey man i'm not uh, i'm not too worried about the the tags nowadays it's uh and I, I just want to get back into it, man. It's uh, like, I, I was even reflecting on some old photos and it's just like, oh, I, what I would do to take a picture of Cam and Teddy walking into the, the rink there now so one of them can toss it on their Insta. Yeah, definitely. The Instagram's getting pretty dry right now. Just no, no more Robbie pictures that we can that we know will just look good without even uh, seeing it. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. All right, take care. Thank you very much. See ya. All right, that's it for this week, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please leave us a review, share it with a friend. All that stuff helps us get out to more and more people. And yeah, I mean, we are just coming up on the official one-year anniversary of Greedos Reels. And I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who tunes in every week and listens. It really means a lot to me. I love doing these. You know, it's always nice to reconnect with the athletes that I've had the chance to work with and get to know, along with just other people in sport and whatnot. It's... uh. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, especially over these lockdown days where you just kind of get to hop on a Zoom call and reflect with a, an old friend or a colleague or whatnot. So enjoy the rest of your week. I hope you guys all stay safe. And in the meantime, stay best kind.